In this tutorial, we'll look at how to convert JavaScript strings into numbers. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to JavaScript Snippets, a series of tutorials where we look at some of the key tasks you'll need to do as a junior developer using JavaScript. If you have a second, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below so that you don't miss out on any of these essential JavaScript tutorials. Okay, so you've got a string and it contains a number, maybe it's come back from some API or some data that you've imported into the project. And because it's a string, when you use it within JavaScript, it, it's treated as such. So if you try to add a number to it, for example, it just appends items onto the end of the string rather than adding to the actual number. So we want to convert this string that contains a number into a real number that JavaScript can use for addition, etc. So this is a really common thing to do, and it's really simple to actually solve as well. So if we, the way we do that, if we want to convert the string directly into a number, we use this parse int function. The int obviously being short for integer. And you can see if we now try and add a number onto that, it's actually added onto the value of the number that's contained within the string. You might have noticed there is in the function definition that there's a second option that you can pass in, which is the radix or the base of the number. And this is defaulted at 10, which is the base that pretty much any number that you're going to be working with in your code is set in. But a lot of style guys do suggest putting it in there just for clarity. Uh, you could change this to a binary base by, for example, putting it into base2. But just to let you know that that optional argument is actually there for parse int. So that's great for whole numbers, but what about if we've got a floating point number, so a decimal number, or something like this, for example? When we actually run the code again, we still get the same result back, and the actual decimal point itself is actually ignored. Uh, so the way around that is to use a different function, which unsurprisingly for a floating point number is actually parse float. And you can see there, if we actually run that again, that we've now got access to the decimal value as well. A trickier problem to solve is what about if you've got a string that has a number in it, but it has commas to separate the units. So say you had a large number in the millions that had a value like this, which might be common if you're dealing with big data. And if we actually try and parse the integer value of that now, what do you think will happen? Will you be forgiven for thinking that you'll get the million value back? But if we actually run that code, you'll see we just get the value back of one. Because the parseInt function, actually, when it encounters something which it doesn't consider part of the number, and the comma that appears directly after the first one is something that it considers not part of the number, the actual function stops and it just returns whatever it's found so far. So there are a few more advanced ways of solving this, but probably a quick and dirty way of doing it is to just replace the commas that appear within the string itself with a blank space. So we're effectively just removing those commas from the string. Uh, and if we run it again, oh, we actually get the first four numbers and we did actually need to tell the replace function to replace all of the commas in the string that we're working with, and we could do that with a simple reg regular expression and telling it to apply it globally to the string. So this could be a little bit dangerous if you're working with things like currency, because some places in the world do actually use commas to denote the decimal point or, or different parts of their values. But if you're only working with dollars or a common currency, then this is just a quick way to actually get rid of those values from the string and be able to parse it into an actual number. So I hope you found that snippet useful and hopefully now you understand how to convert strings that contain numbers into actual numbers that you can work with in JavaScript. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more snippet tutorials and I'll see you next time.